You're listening to the Discussing the Resilient podcast, hosted by Aidan Smalley and William Reid. Competitive 40k podcast for the servants of Nurgle and the Fallen 14th Legion. Tactics, meta-analysis and all things Death Guard. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Discussing the Resilient podcast. Uh, Episode six now. Um, obviously, thanks to everyone who's uh, who's tuned in because we know a lot of people have, have listened to every episode. Um, get a lot of messages. Oh, Ed and get a lot of messages. As I say, he's the uh, the online sort of <laughs> presence of uh, all this. I am the social media overlord. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also thanks to everyone who's been downloading the podcast Aidan just pointing out we've had a bit less views on YouTube as we had done previously obviously previously I've been on the YouTube we, we you know it took us a while to get on other, other platforms uh, we noticed they've been dropped and then Aidan went and looked at the downloads and uh, yeah um, hundreds upon hundreds of downloads so thank you very much to everyone who's downloading the podcast obviously take their iPods um, you know wherever you're listening um, yeah really appreciate and hopefully you'll, uh, you'll continue to support us um, so yeah, so obviously this episode, the few things have happened in the 40k community. Uh, me and Aidan have played some games, so we'll, we'll touch on those briefly as part of it. But obviously we want to uh, go into the uh, the balanced data slate, uh, talk about how it affects the rest of the meta really, because you know sadly I'm, I'm sure it's no spoiler at this point the Death Guard didn't get anything. Uh, boo. <laughs> yeah, big big boo. I mean, obviously there's some some salt perhaps about that, but then you know end of the edition, you know maybe it's, you know maybe it's all all irrelevant. Uh, then obviously we're going to you know just sort of have a, a bit of a talk about 10th edition at the end just talk about some of the rules we've seen so far obviously you know putting things with a pinch of salt and trying to sort of take a step back and remember you know rules we've seen we don't know the, the context of the wider game so there's no point in getting too excited about things but maybe some, some early hot takes at least you know just to sort of keep people informed what we've seen you know obviously maybe we've missed some bits maybe people want to comment below you know at the end and, and tell us things that they've seen that they think you know we've missed um, but yeah, but come. Uh, how about you, Ian? You know, what, what have you been up to since uh, since the last episode? Uh, so since last episode, um, I think it was the last episode that I mentioned that basically I'm sort of on the back burner at the moment for ninth edition coming to an end, waiting for tenth. So, but we did actually attend your your RTT as we said in the last um, last episode with my very silly silly meme list, um, which we'll go <laughs> into and we'll talk about that because that was a fun experience and a learning experience as well. <laughs> but part of that, I've been painting my Votan up. Pretty much, Ooh, um, I know I've, I've got everything. Like I, I can't get any more death guard. I've got it all. <laughs> I have one rhino. I have one rhino still in box that I could oh, tell. I, don't know, yeah, I, mean, I, I saw your, 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 the suspicious looking flesh mower at the uh, the tournament. It looked a lot like a blight launch one of those flesh mowers. It, you so know what? You it to, it, uh, it did look a bit weird, and <laughs> that's what happens when you don't look at which blow drone you're picking up before you pack it. <laughs> <laughs> ah right, okay. That's what we'll put it down to then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll put we'll put it down to that. We'll put it down to gross incompetence rather than modelling issues. <laughs> but yeah, um, part of that, just you know, playing played a couple casual games. Um, my friends have just started playing. So it's more more friends. That's like my only friend. <laughs> um, which is obviously he's wanting to learn the game, and I'm like how do I teach someone because everything I'm about to teach you is completely pointless in about a couple of weeks so oh, trying to a- keep it sort of like simple to is this a guy who plays Nurgle Demons is this a guy I've met yeah yeah oh, he's not yeah so him he- and his friend group have kind of just started so yeah we got an orc player as well who's literally just came in last on Monday with his combat patrol so trying to like not be like hey maybe don't like get used to doing the psychic phase and stuff like that because it's not going to stick around so but but yeah part of that it's been fun to teach people and stuff like that And but yeah I'm I'm um, in the the waiting room played some events painting some nice. stuff all good nice yeah um, I mean similar to yourself I mean I have every Death Guard model under the sun uh, most of it painting and the stuff that isn't painted is you know like my uh, I forget what the terrain piece even called but it's <laughs> stuff like that that I, I don't <laughs> don't expect to put on the table anytime soon um, the my so yeah, so, more lignifier I think so yeah I mean I, I feel like I just in my pile of shame in there <laughs> next to all the uh, all the stuff on sprues and, uh, and suspicious looking bags that 
and that cheap Games Workshop in China. Uh, so yeah, if you do ever get sponsored by Games Workshop, we'll have to uh, go back and delete that bit of the episode. Um, <laughs> just censor that one bit. <laughs> so, yeah. don't, uh, don't even like make it subtle. Just literally go a giant beep and just go redacted. <laughs> <laughs> do that thing where they uh, when they put it back when people swear. <laughs> do all that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I played a GT at the weekend. I played at um, Winehammer in uh, Huddersfield in the UK. Funnily enough, won by, guess who, Mike Porter. Uh, no surprise when we lose in our region, Mike Porter. If he turns up, there's only Matt Robinson, maybe Manny Team if Manny Team has travelled, but it's guys and names that everyone's sort of heard of from you know various other podcasts who, who win, who are the only people who beat Mike. So as soon as Mike was there and there was none of the other guys who sort of uh, tussle, tussle for that top spot, it was, uh, you know... I don't think Bookies would have took bets on who was going to take out the event. Uh, <laughs> but um, but yeah, I went. Uh, I only won two games, uh, sadly. Uh, one that I only lost by a point. Um, so I mean, two of the losses uh, were I've said to Aidan before the before the show. Obviously, the, the list I talked about last week or, or last episode, I suppose, they're every two weeks at the moment, uh, where I basically have the massive uh, foul blight spawn or switching off charges. Uh, not so good into Tau and Imperial Guard, it turns out, because uh, they don't want to charge you, they want to blast you off from the side of the board. <laughs> and uh, my army, it's slightly quicker than Morph Death Guard list with the three flesh mowers and then things dropping in, but not that quick that it can get across No Man's Land quick enough. So, uh, so yeah, I learned, uh, didn't learn the hard way, but um, it was uh, the games before they even started felt like they had a, a foregone conclusion. <laughs> but it was still good. Uh, the Imperial Guard guy, absolutely amazing player, a guy called Marcus. Um, and uh, he just had such a good laugh playing the game. Like, he got the point, even he was like, this is a really bad matchup for you. And I was like, yeah, this is pretty shit. So, like, from the from the get-go, we were laughing and joking about it and sort of, like, trying to find small little wins that I could have. Even halfway through the game, see if I wanted, I could change the secretary so after he scored some points. And I was like, no, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> uh, then he whiffed two shooting phase, uh, phases pretty hard, actually. It was quite funny. And then, actually, at the end, it was, in his last turn, he, had, he did have to think a little bit. We were like, look, you, you've got this. I was like, look, just move them there. And he was like, yeah, okay. So we kind of made sure that he won it because he was playing very lax of days in those shooting phases. He did nearly give me a chance, but he wasn't taking it seriously because he knew it was so heavily in his favour, which is why it would have been a bit naff if I'd have like, squeaked it through Yeah, somewhere. if you'd have just tried and snuck it and been like, waha, your your nice behaviour has been punished, sir. Yeah, 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 be dead friendly in the last thing. Go, ah, but actually, this has all been a ploy, really. I'm going to beat you by a point. And ah, no, no, no. Like, oh, yeah, so we weren't going to do that. Um, no. <laughs> But yeah, but um, apart from that, played played lovely games. Uh, first, so the first round, I beat the guy who I think he came third or fourth. I was his only, I was his only loss. Uh, it was World Eaters, but as we talked about in the last episode, my and I alluded to there, my list obviously shuts down the charge phase. So World Eaters and Orcs and those kind of armies, I've, I've got game into basically. So we kind of talked after the game. We're basically like he had some bad dice as well. And we're basically like my army is like a weird skew that's almost built to beat yours, but accidentally. And he was like, yeah. Then every other game, you know, World Eaters did what World Eaters do. Um, so he's, he did really well. Because um, he, he actually uh, played my flatmate in the, in the last game and beat my flatmate. So that's been a, an ongoing <laughs> joke in the flat. My flatmate did better than me over on the tournament. But because I'd uh, beat the person who beat him, I'm like, well, you might have done better. But, you know, did you beat that last guy? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but by default, that means you're the better player out of both of yours because you beat the guy that beat him. Correct? That's how it works, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, when, when me and my flatmate play at the moment, he smashes me quite heavily with his. Uh, the demons list that he's loving to run at the moment so uh, so yeah the reality is you could go go on then we'll just have a game and I'll be like well, no no we can't actually play because I know you'll win I'll just I'll, I'll just you know <laughs> I'll just talk about that one world eaters player um, but yeah moving on from that though next game was against Tau um, it was a close game um, I gave him a couple of take backs because there was a few sort of near, near gotchas he, he, I, did, I forgot to have the start of flesh mode going to work intervene six inches uh, and there would have been a moment where it would have swung the game in my favour if uh, if I if I charged a flesh more into some uh, some breaches he put against a wall, get line of sight and stuff. So there was, there was a few bits of that because I had other stuff that would have then put obsec on a point. And but yeah, but it, it, that wasn't the biggest of losses. It was like a really low scoring game. I think he beat me by maybe six or seven points in the end. Well, that was um, close. Yeah, I mean, it was close, but it wasn't close at the same time, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, it's like the board state probably doesn't represent look like the score would, if you get what yeah, I mean. Yeah, any time I popped out to push in an objective, I was just getting smashed off, and then he was scoring the secondaries where I couldn't sort of... I could get spread the sickness, uh, but I took to spoil ground, thinking I'll just try and push into him and uh, you know, hopefully do enough damage at the end of the game. I'll, I'll have some models left to score, but... 
sadly, um, yeah, he <laughs> come the end of the game. I was pretty much playing with uh, I think one death shroud, a flesh bone, <laughs> one wound, and uh, <laughs> and something else like the, oh, and the tally man. I think the tally man hit behind a wall. Okay, it was it was a bit uh, it was a bit depressing the last round. Um, I can't remember what else I played after that. What was the third game? Oh, I think that was the Imperial Guard game that, that I mentioned before. Really nice guy. Then the Custodes game that I lost by one point. Uh, just had the two. Is it the Wardens bricks? Yeah, the ones? big the big ten man bricks of Wardens. Yeah. Yes, I mean I, I I made a couple of small mistakes in the last turn because I lost by a point. I lost if I, I took no prisoners. I needed to kill literally one more guy. One Aww. more guy. I was one wound off the the, the one point I needed on um, on no prisoners to make it a tie game. But I would have it would have been a tie. And then the last round. I, you don't know who you'd have played because obviously the parents and different I could have paired up he could have paired down and the last round I played Grey Knight's a lovely guy um, but at the, the last round we're basically, we basically we both knew we were just playing for we were just you know playing for the sort of like just have a game really at that point so yeah. really fun sort of like game again loads of laughing and joking that kind of stuff and I won but like I say it was one of them ones where he wasn't taking it too seriously Neil was I so there's nothing nothing to really break down about about that but but what about you then Ian obviously we, you know it's my sort of catch up on um, on sort of tournament stuff uh, but and obviously you, you came to, to Stone I mean obviously I've you know I, I, I know what your result was and I, I was there to watch some of the games but you know uh, you know break break it down in your own words I guess yeah, so just just quickly, like just just proves like even though you went two three, like you still had a good time at an event. So like, you know, people don't get too caught up on your win loss because like again, the week like two weeks before, Will just went like four one at a super major, and then he's gone two three. It happens, like it can happen, honestly. And um, and I need to learn this as well myself. I I get like proper demoralized. You you know this when I get an early loss, but I'm trying to work on it. That's why I took this list, and I still had to. You know, you saw me after the first round, which I'll talk about in a sec. But yeah, you but know, I had to pick right, though, I mean, Just to expand on that point, I mean, my list prime example. Um, it plays heavily on the matchups. You know, like I say, I, I'm looking to fight combat armies, armies with a lot of combat, so that I can use the, the switching off charge phase trick. So you've got to be realistic when you're taking this like this. You know, some matchups are much harder to win than others, and you know, because Death Guard is slow army, you can't always play yourself out of a spot like in maybe a couple of Harlequins and things like that. So, you know, you've, you've got to know that going into the event and, and take things, you know, have a laugh. Like I say, I knew, I knew, it, I knew when it was when it was when I was up against it. And rather than get salty and try and be, be sad about it and you know give myself a hard time, just you know, it's nice to sort of play new people, especially when you go to events a lot and you get to sort of know the same faces and things like that. It's it's nice source, you know, people come over and have an ask how how you're getting on. But uh, but I, I was jokingly telling people I, I was you know and uh, this is this is the truth was uh, the best Death Guard player at the event hands down because I was the only <laughs> Death Guard player at the event, hands down so also the worst one of the event so not but one of the joys of playing Death Guard at tournament you generally get best in faction even if you were, <laughs> even if you were, you lose all your games because you only won there but anyway not not to steal your thunder in and go on, you, you 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 break down there no, break, down, right. break down so, yeah. So obviously, people just for people who don't know, basically, I'm designing to take silly lists for now to see the addition out models that you don't normally use, models that you know underperform, shall we say? Um, so just a very quick one for what I did take. I ended up taking Mortarian because um, I barely used him because he always gets just insta killed. Um, so I thought I'm going to take him. I've painted him. I'm really happy. I love the model. I wanted to have some fun with Morty. I took free Flamer Plague Burst Crawlers because I missed those <laughs> things. I used to spam them in eighth. So back away entropy always cannons. <laughs> yep, always the best weapon. Entropies are over eight. <laughs> God, I wish I had entropy cannons that game. <laughs> Um, I took two flesh mower drones, a big 10 man blight lord brick, a unit of four death shroud, two units 10 pox walkers, and then the best virions in the game, the noxious blight bringer, <laughs> and his amazing relic to stop once per, once per game to stop a fallback on a two up, Oof. and the plague surgeon. Um, they, they, yeah, they did things, I guess. <laughs> Oh, in the <laughs> plague existed. surgeons yeah they existed at least that's for sure but we'll get into it so round one I got grudge matched <laughs> by the fellow who runs the Manchester Hive Wargaming Club with me Ben um, because he's a dick <laughs> <laughs> he did this out of pure spite and um, I'm pretty sure he just wanted an easy win to be honest <laughs> but yeah we did play I did end up losing this one um, it was Black Legion he had the big trans hitman can't re-roll termy brick and Mortarion unfortunately got stuck into that and 
you just it's nothing you can do you know you, you're hitting it on fours with no rerolls allowed you minus one to wound it because the black rune then it's got five up feel no pain and the involves and whatnot. so more you just got stuck in there all game i had a really good turn one my plague burst crawls out of line of sight dropped a war dog to one wound nice so yeah so i was really happy with that and then next turn when they all had line of sight on one they did zero wounds <laughs> <laughs> Logic, and again, if I had an entropy cannon, I could have shot the entropies at, at any point. But I took flamers, and I never got in range. And um, I had an atrocious turn where my dice were a bit reminiscent of that tower game, and I failed to. I had an entire turn; all I killed was one possessed. Ah, uh, see, but yep. I know what happened in your last game, and you had the equivalent of the tower game, but on one of your models, didn't you? Where he just lived yes. against yep. all odds. But I'll, I'll let you get to that uh, that bit of the story. Yeah. So we lost that one, and I was feeling a bit like, oh, fuck this game, like, dumb shit again, bad luck dice, gurg. But then, like, you know, my mate, obviously Ben and yourself would talk to me like, like, why are you so frustrated? And I was like, I just want Marty to do something cool. And you're like, all right, well, and ben, ben said to me, he's like, well, just run him at them. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, just run at them. He's like, just have fun with Marty. Like, he's either going to die or he's going to go out in a blaze of glory. I was like, all right, fair enough. So pairings come up for round two, and we've got World Eaters, and he has Angron. So... What else is going to be cooler than Primark on Primark? So, <laughs> <laughs> that is my goal for this game, is to have Marty fight Angron. That is it. Don't care about the win, I'm just going to try and have a Marty versus Angron fight. And it happened. We got the, we got the fight twice. Um, oh, nice, Angron came back. <laughs> yeah. Angron charged Mortarion, did all the seed sweep attacks, actually. He did the mortal wounds on sixes to wound, and he dropped Marty down to seven wounds. So I got pretty good on the feeling of pains, and then Marty one shot him. <laughs> <laughs> and then in the the entire game was kind of like he came forward, did a lot of pressure. I spread out my demon engines because he brought a bloodthirster down with the warp locus and Angron, and the bloodthirster went and hunted in my demon engines, so I just spread them out. So it just took him like five years to like kill them all, and then when eventually once he'd done that, he was just on the side of a board. I was like, I'll just keep shooting with terminators. So. Ignored that. Um, there was a point where, obviously, Bloodbound, Ape, you know, or Flesh Mowers eat Berserkers. Really funny. Yeah. Happy with that. <laughs> um, he had Ape Bound coming in, and there was a cool point where he tried to charge with three Ape Bound into the Death Shroud, but this is the turn Angron charged Morty, so I'm going to get it when erupt. So I was like, okay, let me do the maths in my head. And I'm after that, if I manage to kill one of the Ape Bound on Overwatch, even with the fight on death, I should have at least one death shroud live, oh, which would nice. hold a point. So I did the overwatch on it, did manage to pick up one of the eight bound. He then charged in, I interrupted, killed them, he fought on death, and he killed everyone but the death shroud sergeant. So I was like, yay, nice. maps! <laughs> and then because the sergeant was alive, he managed to walk onto his his home object, well, one of his half objectives nice. so was it an and eight bound on, on one wound and is that how you picked him up in the overwatch uh, no, he, he had two he had two wounds he took. He lost one cause we blew up the rhino with a three damage plague burst crawler shot and it did you know you splashed the mortal wound oh yeah and, and I, tagged, I tagged one of them with that mortal so yeah I managed to get two wounds through on the plague gauntlets which is quite lucky given you need fives to hit fives to wound sorry cause the T5 down to four and you only strength three but yeah I, I, but he, he was because of Mortarion's position, and I had my inexorable aura nearby, it was it was an AP one plague um, Overwatch. Oh right, so yeah. it so did that, did it's help. The AP yeah. that makes that because I was thinking in my head, oh, a two up save. I'm not sure unless you've got the plague surge in there. Then not the plague yeah, surge. The only three up saves. Remember the only three up save eight bound. Oh right, it wasn't the exalted one. Right, okay. No, no, just no. That's why if it was exalted, it couldn't fight on death. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't give a shit about that. But yeah, so it was you know we started cleaning them up. I did a lot of damage to them. Um, Angron came back uh, twice actually in the game. Uh, the first time he came back, he wanted to actually, he was still playing for the win because it was still pretty close. I did what I said in the World Eaters video. He came in, he's like, I'm going to charge like minus two to charge, enjoy. <laughs> nice. So um, he failed the charge and then he got picked up by, I think, ev Evan, just my Blight Lords just shot him to death. Um, and then it was basically over turn four. So turn five, he was one Blood Tithe point off resurrecting Angron. So I let, him, I let him have one. I was like, go on, go on, have one. Brought him back just so he could charge Marty. I didn't do the minus two to charge. Um, he failed his roll, command point re-rolled it, failed it again. But I was like, go on, just get in there, let's have a fight. So he came in and I said, I said, the caveat is, 
even if you swing first I'm swinging because he didn't technically make the charge I was like we can both swing at the same time and you just have fun with it um, but he said he's had to go for the smashes this time and he he wounded them all but the Mortarion passed all but one of the nice. invulns and the feel no pain kept him alive and then Mortarion once again one shot angry <laughs> 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 so yeah so that was that was a really fun game the dude was really um, really chill like world eater games like are just genuinely fun stuff dies like stuff just interacts it's not like tower or something they keep hiding it's very interactive very fun game so i had fun there so we're feeling good after that and then we get the round three pairing and what do i see iron hands mm. yeah, this is a game where i kind of stood and stood and watched a bit before we get into this, by the way, I actually wanted to sort of nearly tell you, I want to give Kyle a quick shout out because Kyle also had Iron Hands on a different table and Kyle pulled out one of the smartest moves I've ever seen. It's like it was literally, I was like, wow, that is dead smart because I was watching, he was playing Mike Duff, who's, who I also know. But other people were like, oh, what's this happened? And then like, I was like, oh, this is what he's done. I said, oh, he's dead clever. I almost had to come and tell you, but then I was like, if I tell you as I'm, I'm a TO, I'm not being impartial at that point. But basically, you know how the Iron Hands this is something good to say on the podcast by the way which is why I've, I'm going to say it just before you get to your game Yeah. you know when basically they build a bit of the castle behind that big bit of terrain where you can't you, you can't see them at all but they're kind of yeah. in a big clump so Kyle in his this is a strat that I completely forgot to see from the book orbital bombardmented in the middle <laughs> of his castle basically where you can stay there if you want or you have to move out and move closer or get where I can see you or just take splash of mortal wounds on like four or five units and I was like that is it's a pretty smart play so obviously it cost him the CP but it did make him move out and I don't think Kyle's game went too well in there I think Kyle did lose but that play in itself I was like that is a really smart play just to break up that castle and you know all just sort of do a bit of chip damage to them and yeah you know like I say you know hats off to Kyle I would never have thought of it but when I'd seen it done I was like next time I play Iron Hands or an I would just castle behind a big bit to and I'm going to do that and the following turn, I'm going to, after I've done that, I'm going to shoot a Plague Burst Mortal and do the Splash Mortal Wound to sort of try and finish a few <laughs> bits of I was thinking, you know. So, yeah, so, you know, for guys listening to the podcast, and I think Kyle does listen because he's definitely come up and, and said that, you know. Hats off to Kyle. Uh, that's one of the smartest plays I've seen in any game of 40k for quite a while. And the fact it was a Death Guard player, Kyle, I owe you one. Because <laughs> I'm going to steal that <laughs> That's move. cool. But yeah, that's go on, cool. you, you, you talk about your game. Sorry, I did, just wanted to give Kyle yeah, his, right. his shout out there. No, fair play, well played, Kyle. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I had, I had Iron Hands against me. He had two character dreadnoughts, because he had the one that was upgraded to the Volkite one with all the bells and whistles. And then he had a, he was playing like Minotaur's Iron Hands successors. So he had like a na- another named character dreadnought. Contemptor. So before we go much further, actually, because people in the podcast might know who we're playing as well, because it was David from Glasshammer. So if ever I've, I've used to watch the uh, the Glasshammer streams, David's a taller guy. I think he's Polish uh, yes. originally. Yeah. So yeah, so people actually know who 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 he plays. He's a good player as well. He's not just uh, he's not just. I mean, you know, anyone anyone who's who's, who's good. There's a lot of good players there, but David in particular, he knows the game well. Yeah. Yeah. He did nice guy as well. He took he took this game really well. To be fair. So. Um, I'm sat there, I'm against Iron Hands, they got the Dreads, they got um, Desolators, um, I think it was 15 Desolators, so I'm just like, ooh, they got the Land Speeds, Volum, Multi Melt, a couple of Vanguard Vets, like, you know, the, your average Iron Hands list, so I'm sat there with a big ass Mortarian, <laughs> he's like literally a sitting <laughs> duck, and, um, you know, a couple like Demon Engines and whatnot, so I'm like, hmm, this, this isn't probably going to go well, but at least I'll go home early, and, you know, I, it did end early, <laughs> just not the way I thought it was going to happen. Yeah, I watched this. I, 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 I saw it. I was pretty. I was, it, was, it was pretty impressive. So I was, I wasn't the impression right. If I, if I hide, I'm going to die. So we went online. We're just like, we're going to go for it. We're going to go online. And then David, 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 David. Which is, is it? Vid or with? Yes, David. David. Yeah, David. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's David, a- but the pause equivalent. So I think it's going to uh, David with the W instead. Yeah. And he had infiltrators, and then he put infiltrators a little too close to my lines, and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> opportunity!" So I deployed my blight lords as close as I could, my bloat drones as close as I could, and basically everything I could as close to these infiltrators. And then we decided that we remembered in our head we have the bell boy and his once per game relic of no fallbacks. He's so my entire game plan was get first turn which is as you know is a very reliable game plan you know you can always guarantee first turn as death guard um t- 
tag the tag the infiltrators, stay locked in combat, and then turn two will have every single thing in his deployment zone. And for once, Will, it went just as planned. <laughs> nice. So, turn one, Morty runs right into the middle, Terminators run out, everyone runs out, flesh moles come out, and goddamn do we charge them infiltrators. We tag them with everything we can, and then we swing with as little as we can. So, fun thing, the flesh mowers actually still keep their plague probe. Um, they don't replace it for the flesh mower, so when they swung in, I swung in with the plague probe. So, rather than having to do 12 attacks oh, at strength. That's quite clever. Yeah, I, I only had to do four attacks that's from six AP two one damage, um, and then he helped me out because he's an infiltrator and he had the helix gauntlet. He had to ignore the first failed save, which was quite oh, funny. I thought he could to choose on that, but I suppose you know. No, it's just it's just it's just when you feel the first save. I don't know. Well, maybe he just did it because he wasn't caught catish, you know, on what was going on yet. Um, and then I didn't pile in my terminators. I just I just touched him with the one, swung him his axe. It's quite funny. I had arch contaminator within range, and I put full reels to hit on them. Um, so he was a bit confused when I was re-rolling all the successful wounds and all the successful hits. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because you, yeah, you choose to. I mean, that's another thing to sort of mention to the guys listening. A lot of the re-rolls are worded. For example, I'm pretty sure re-roll ones on Plague is you can. So if you don't want to re-roll, you don't have to. Or, as in did there, if you re-roll the successful ones, you can re-roll them and fish for fails if you've got like a, a plan where you want that, which is something that some people don't realise. So... Yeah, so we had a good we had a good tag and making sure the bellboy was in six of the infiltrators. So it came to Darius' turn. Um, he did his command phase stuff. He went to his movement phase, and I had to do I had to get that dice because this relic, this once per game relic, still requires a roll off, and you need to get so a two up. Stupid, isn't it? I, I just assumed <laughs> you're going to take it and you'd use it once and roll a one, and but that was. Pointless. Yeah, <laughs> and it almost did. I rolled it and I got a two. Thank God. So now I have ten blight lords stuck in combat on the edge of his deployment pretty much because it was the quarters one um, so you know it's pretty close deployment anyway um, two bloat drones are in that as well um, there's some plague bus crawls around there as well <laughs> um, the characters are all protected happily and and obviously Marty's nearby so Darid's like okay right it's, it's time to do some shooting yeah so he comes out and he's like alright we're gonna, we're, gonna sh- we're gonna shoot this big boy and just like the four ups of the Riptide, the look, the look returneth, and Marty took way less well, damage than he should, he should have should died. Have. I think. I mean, if we did the maths, I'd, I'd love to. We could maybe. I think he should have died maybe twice. Like Possibly. he should have died. Probably should have died with all the shooting that he put into him. I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe what happened. <laughs> but anyway, I'll let you tell the story because like, even I was in disbelief. I was like, wow. <laughs> Just so, wow. We took a plasma cannon, we took 10 desolators, we took another 5 desolators, we took the character Volcanic Contemptor, just we as took... Well, let's just, because a lot of people in the podcast or some people might not realise, and might just, because obviously on, online, all the hype is about desolators out of line of sight profile. In line of sight, desolators hit with 3 plus D, D3 damage. Like, per guy. guns per guy. Is it not two shots per guy as well? No, it is one, but it's oh, strength. It's strength is it strength nine or eight? But it's like AP four, D three plus three dice. Not nice. You don't. It's dark lances. It's basically, literally every yeah, guy's basically dark lances. Basically, an entropy cannon. Yeah, pretty much every guy's an entropy cannon. Yeah, yeah. So, um, like, we're not, so we're not talking some some bolters or some blink shots. We're talking like things with the profile to kill big models. Yeah, and um, there's fifteen of them. Iron hands <laughs> buffs. Like, <laughs> yeah. So they're all ignoring heavy. They're all re-rolling ones to hit and ones to wound from a lieutenant nearby. Um, all shooting at Marty, and then you've got the character dreadnought who's got the sixes to hit explode and sixes to wound explode ability on. So that's a lot of shots. Every land speeder has a multi melter and like a heavy belt or something on it. They're all shooting him. A drop pod comes down with two devastator squads in it. Um, and he does split fire them. He puts a unit into the Death Shroud and a unit into Marty. Um, now, I didn't know this. I don't know why I got this in my head. I had in my head forever that Grav Cannons are free damage versus power armor. I think they're AP3 against power armor. Isn't the, it's, it's not the AP, is it? Not the better you save, the more AP they get? No, it? it's the better the save, the better the damage, but oh. it's, they're only damage one. Oh. And they go to two, which versus us is not. I had it in my head that they would damage two and go damage three, because oh, that's what the Votan that, grab right? cannons are. That, yeah, everyone seems to think it, but when I actually opened, because my friend Ben told me afterwards, and I opened the book and I was like, oh yeah, 
but mm. I took my saves when I was doing my damage to myself. I was saying to, to David, I was saying, so damage two, and I think he was like th- thinking I was saying damage two before DR. Oh, so you actually I actually, rolled to I actually took, yeah, I actually took way more damage on the death trap than I should have. Oh. <laughs> Because I was t- I was treating him as damage free, but I don't think I just think it was just lost in. I don't think he was trying to like treat. I think it was just you know he was assuming I was saying oh it's damage two because yeah. that is correct technically, but I meant it after dr. So it's just you know whatever it is whatever. Um, but yeah, Marty uh, Marty got shot by a fair whack and he lost a grand lost. total of uh, three wounds. Wow. I mean, you made all those saves, didn't you? <laughs> Every <laughs> single. Many, did you make the fatal pains as well? Like, yeah, I, I, I don't made know so exactly many. What fe- happened? Because I, I did wander <laughs> off when I came back. I just thought I'd come back and Morty would be dead plus the other half of your army. Because yeah, he Guard, made like literally everything. <laughs> yeah, because it was a kind of thing where Death Guard's resilience into that army. You know, it's like the prime example of where power creep out creeps the resilience that we're meant yeah. to have. And when I came back in, I'm still pretty much there. And I was like, all oh, right, have you been talking? Have you just decided you're going to talk talk this through instead of acting more? And you were like, oh, no. This, this he is shot everything. Happened. He's I done. believe it. Yeah, I think the Contemptor did the most to him with the mortal wounds. And I shrugged a lot of them as well. So he took like three or five. It wasn't, he was still full. He was still top bracket. I know that much. Um, so yeah, um, he obviously ended his turn with a what is now. I obviously he then charged in. He charged a contemptor into my Blight Lords. Five Vanguard vets into the Blight Lords. He was just trying to like hurt them, but the gloaming bloat from Morty was covering them, so the lightning claws were just just pool absolute pool noodles and did nothing to the Blight Lords. The Dreadnought got a single smack in. Um, and it was flat free damage down to two, so it didn't matter. I'm a, oh, by the way, this entire event, my plague surgeon didn't make a single six up, like a single one. He's awful, like literally. Right, okay, so everyone listening, the noxious blightbringer it, on the tier list is now above the plague surgeon. The noxious blightbringer is actually not that bad. He's actually pretty cool. I actually I, I enjoyed the plus one movement, and the relic won this game completely because um, that's stopping me, all my termites and stuff getting shot. But the plague surgeon is a pile of actual shit. Do not run him. He's. I, I had. Was... I had the perfect scenario. The big blood first was like, I'm gonna do my sweeps with my axe. They're all flat four damage, so down to three on blight lord. So I'm like, right. If I make a single six, that basically saves an entire blight lord from the next hit, because then you know the two, the the damage will have to go into that one. Uh, so he did like six wounds to them. I'm like, right, here we go. Right. Not a single six. I have any of them. None. The, yeah, the most, it's, not, it's not even the, statistical. If no, you sorry. roll three dice, you shouldn't. You, you, you I might tell get a why. six, but you need to roll six to get one six on statistics. Yeah, I, I, I tell like he I, he made a single six the entire event. It's just a shame it was against a six damage weapon. <laughs> so he did nothing. It's so it's the fact his orb is three inches as well. It's like that it's also such sucks. A joke. Yeah. Like he's just a bad unit. Like yeah, and also my opponents were kind enough to kill my units entirely, so he never even got to heal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's terrible. He's... Like, I ran him at the start of the edition because you know, you know give, everyone give was hyped by him at the start of the yeah. edition. Yeah, but he's so trash. Like, <laughs> he's he's yeah, he just he's frustratingly bad. Like, he's... yeah, if people if people like listen to this, hoping I had a way to make the play decision, the Blightbringer work. I genuinely think there's a way you can make the Blightbringer work. I don't think he's actually that bad, but the Plague Surgeon is actual hot trash. Like, you would have to bring like thirty Blight Lords to make him maybe worth it. If the Blightbringer was 40 points, I'd think about him. It's just... Yeah, the Blightbringer's honestly, like, pretty good. Like, again, I wish the Relic didn't have the stupid two-off roll-off and it wasn't once per turn, and it cost a CP. Oh, and he's not good. I'm not going to sit here and say he's great, but the plus one move is actually useful. Like, that is a useful ability to have. useful. Because you... I think it, it must have been you, because I haven't taught anyone else about this. You give the example of combo and it with getting out a Rhino, I could get out a Rhino and then get an extra, yeah. an extra in, so you get, like, have nine-inch... Now and it's moving plague marines, and I was like, "That's pretty sweet." I mean, yeah, obviously it's, it's a it's a gimmick, but at the same time, like I say, if it was forty points, if it was forty points, and I don't know, one less wound because he's got no no output to my knowledge. Like, no, it, it'd be enough to buff, you know, like a plague marine horde or something if you were going to go down that road. But yeah, he he did though. He did bonk a vanguard veteran to death, so he did claim a kill. <laughs> the plague surgeon couldn't even do that. Slammed his belly into his face. <laughs> yeah. So basically, turn two come around. I now have a I have a ten blight lords, two blow drones, Mortarion in his deployment zone, 
and we just we just go to town. We're just like, right, we're just gonna kill everything. Um, so Marty manages because he obviously didn't expect Marty to live. He'd place his desolators close to his contemptor. So I fly on to his contemptor. I'm like, I'm gonna charge your contemptor. He then goes to spend a CP and says, "I'll overwatch on fours." And I'm like, "You actually can't do that because your success is not iron hands. You actually only watch on fives." But it doesn't matter anyway because you're not overwatching jack shit because I've got gloaming blow. <laughs> uh, I always forget that's a side bit of gloaming blow, you know. Like I always yeah. forget that's uh, the other bit of it. So he charges and kills that, but then because he had his units together, because again, I don't think he expected Morty to be there, I then tagged the 10 Desolator squad with Morty, and then, yeah, I basically, by the end of turn three, his entire army was dead, like in his own deployment zone. So. I mean, yeah, I mean, that, that army shoots, it shoots like, it shoots hard, but you, take, you touch it in combat, it just falls, isn't it? I mean, those, those Desolation yeah. Marines, they're just normal Marines in combat, they don't have an invum, they're just toughness four, three plus no, save. Exactly. I got to do the thing you told me about though, which I didn't realise forever. Um, there, so there was a point in the game where I relic grenaded his contempt to Dreadnought at the end of the movement phase that was in combat on Blight Lords, just to do some damage to it. I dropped it to one wound with a grand relic grenade. And then I did the, I went to cast a smite on the land speeder nearby. Um, and I remembered you don't have to have line of sight to the extra mortal wound. Just the so, nearest, yeah. Yeah, so I managed to do the I cast it on an eight, so I did the one mortal wound through the wall which finished off the dreadnought. So that died, and the smite went into the land speeder, which was also on two wounds and killed that. So he's he killed nice. with one spell he picked up two units, so I was like play caster, always a always a good include. Yeah, <laughs> the more you the more I play with play casters, the more I'm I don't think they're an A tier unit. I think they're probably A tier within our book. But they're, I don't own AT unit because I think they're still a bit naff. But um, I mean, the, the thing that I would say, if we're going to sort of not to talk about tears, but the flesh mower drawn, the more I play with it, the more I think it's the star of the show. I might even be at, at this moment in the current meta that we've got. I don't know. I'm struggling to think. Is it the best? Is it the best unit in our book? I mean, it's I, I'm really so enjoying utility. them. Utility at, at one it's at one one five points. Like it's I think so good. it's incredible. I mean when they were one three five, yeah, maybe maybe that was the point break next to twenty points, you know, it adds up. But one one five, there's so utility, especially when you play the strats and they put wounds back or broke into vein and that's You don't actually just... realise how many dice twelve is until you actually roll it. It's like that's a lot of attacks. Yeah. I mean it's a shame that I've re rolls because, you know, still sometimes you get that sad yeah. roll when you just roll a few too many twos to either wound or or hit on, you know, wounding if you're wounding something on, you know, threes, three, yeah, yeah. ones, whatever. But on a whole, they're so efficient, and it's again the speed of them. And I'm, I'm really struggling to, to think of lists that don't have three of them. Like I, I'm really thinking that's, for me at least, the strongest unit in our book by by a long way. So yeah, I agree. I think I agree as well because you can hold it back behind a wall, put something else for me. Five plague marines, they get like, and it just comes up and trades again. 115 points it's generally up it's tr- generally trading up as well which is the mad thing about it um so yeah like i say i'm 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 you know i'm high on them at the moment um, yeah definitely definitely one of the best units but yeah to end, so to end that it was a 90 97 to 36 win so it was proper brutal um because the guy just literally got jumped on instantly and then turned two his entire army was basically either locked in combat or dead um so yeah that was a, that was a fairly fun game from my side of he took it really well he was just like well that's the thing he was like i didn't know that relic existed i did tell him about the relic he just forgot about it um <laughs> but you know it, <laughs> it's he seemed, he seemed an, it's, to take it quite well i mean like i said i was wandering around the hall at that point sort of just is it you finished quite early i remember i think it's half of the round wasn't it I think yeah we finished after like an hour i think it was an hour yeah we finished after like one hour because it was just like it was so off the bat just go 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 because the idea in my head was i either get shot to death and go home early or something mad happens like this and we go home early so yeah, it, it worked out then off didn't he really he seemed to take it really well that would yeah oh yeah he was great about it honestly he was like really just like because he, he 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 had the reaction i wish i had against the tower player um <laughs> now obviously what well, things happen with the tower player that you know put me in a bad mood but whatever um he he genuinely shot all that at marty and then just stood there and just fucking laughed. He was this just like, goes. But what yeah, the that, towel play? This is the, the the dice gods coming back and favouring you this time, isn't it? And it's it's yeah. the frustrating thing about the game is poor pin runs when they spike. Sometimes it just makes games that should be winnable or should be close just feel a bit like a bit oppressive. I I mean, I've had it. You know, custodes is a prime example. We've all played custodes and had that game where they can't make a four save for toffee and they feel like they made a paper. 
and then other times it's just like they just make four up saves for days and then you just feel like yeah. playing into a fucking brick wall so yeah you know it's it's the way it goes but I mean yeah, that was... you know, I, I saw that game and I couldn't believe how much you desolated him <laughs> desolated him <laughs> well, decimated him so yeah <laughs> no we're going right. to go with desolated because it's the desolators we'll go with that oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I'll, but, I'll pretend it was a deliberate pun there you go yeah we'll take, take, take the pride but yeah it was no it was, it was good and was, like I said a learning experience to like don't get too hung up on like I, need, I still need to work on like getting okay we like not having a good round one and whatnot. it happens well, this is it you know like you know, we talked about Mike Porter before, and you know, not to keep talking about, but I know we talk about this. He's just he's local. I met him, and he's a, a player that you know, if people recognise him with the podcast, that's the only reason we, we talk about him as much as we, we do because he's a good sort of like a good example. But I've been at events where Mike Porter takes a loss early because Mike Porter got paid into Manny or someone else, and same with the guys of, of his calibre that you know, if you want at a tournament. You all kind of watch them because everyone knows who they are, and everyone's kind of looking looking up from the bottom to see where they are and. He gets knocked down. He takes an early loss, but he never drops. You know, he he, he stays stays till the end. You know, the top players knock each other out sometimes, or you know, weird dice happen and a top player lose unexpectedly. And you know, like I say, nine out of ten times it continue. And you know, that, that's it. It's a dice game. And as much as it's it, it's important to sort of play, you know, to try and win because it's a competitive podcast. And that's what we're here to sort of talk about. But at the end of the day, it's like I was saying, my event the weekend. It's you know, playing the game is a social thing. It's nice to have a laugh have a joke you know have a drink if that's what you're into whatever um, you know I think that's an important part especially when you're playing a faction like Death Guard because as much as you know when we get a book we often stay you know but once I was in it go, that's it. anyone who's been playing for a while will talk about this the same thing happened at the end of 8th edition it just seems to be our, our archetype just doesn't sort of like go the distance although obviously we came back in the 8th edition with that weird supplement that landed in the middle of lockdown with the last supplement and then the first codex Still salty about that. I still don't understand why yeah, we had we a don't talk like about a for four for <laughs> months. But it does lead nicely to you know new, new additions and stuff like that. You know, obviously tenth is is around the corner. I mean, we, we thought we'd sort of um, run through some of the things that we've seen. I mean, obviously you know just just Warhammer community sort of rules. Well, in a, should, we, should we should we do the data slate first? We'll do the yes, dates. actually that that's we'll, probably, we'll, we'll wrap yeah, up with tenth. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, because obviously we're uh, we are still in ninth edition. So, I mean, what are your thoughts here and going? I mean, obviously, we can, we can run through the big changes that, that, you know, that affect most factions, and there's some changes that were kind of incidental. Uh, but, you know, I mean, obviously, Shock Horror, Death Guard got nothing. Uh, I mean, what were your what were your thoughts in? Did you expect us to get anything? Were you... Um, so, expectation, yes. I didn't expect us to get nothing. Hoping we would get a little something. Um, but my expectation was like they're just gonna be like nah can't be asked <laughs> whatever um, but you know it is what it is it's not the worst thing to not get anything um, so the, obviously the overall the biggest changes were the Dark Angels Deathling has lost oh, um, that was a slap, transhuman yeah they got battered so Deathwing Terminators will no longer have the transhuman effects now I thought in my head they might make it tr- mini transhuman but I didn't think they'd just get rid of it so now it's just gone now oh, weirdly I thought- though I don't actually think this benefits us I think this hurts us more than it benefits us um, I mean the reality is with Dark Angels the Raven Wing stuff with all the pre-plasma is, is just as oppressive it just changes the build so if you're a Dark Angels die-hard player who loved playing the Terminator brick, you know, fair play, you know, I can understand. I mean, I'd be surprised if you Dark Angels die-hard players listen to the podcast. Uh, but, you know, I can understand maybe they're, they're frustrated if they've just finished painting their, you know, the last Terminator model because they are they are a bit dead in the water at this point. But I thought the Terminators, I thought they might just say that the Terminators don't get free war gear because it wasn't the fact that they lived, it was the fact that everyone hit you with a thunder hammer and shot, you know, Cyclone rockets at you well, and stuff like that. Yeah, this is the thing. Power fist, it might have not been as bad. Yeah, they've always had they've always had transhuman. It wasn't a problem before. It's a problem when you start giving them free storm shields, and it's a problem with free war gear. Like free war yeah. gear is just dumb in general. Like I know we abuse it massively as death guard, but it is a dumb. It's a dumb idea, and it's just not a good way of balancing the game. Um, so I do feel a bit sorry from that regards. I don't think it actually benefits us because, as you said, I think the Raven Wing build is now the better one, and that is yeah. a worse matchup for us than because we didn't really struggle with the Death Wing Terminators because of Arch Contaminator and yeah, Plague Weapons. Yeah, shooting armies, a Death Guards, <sighs> Death Guard Bane, unfortunately, yeah. and uh, Raven Wing. You know that they, 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 they fall into that category. Yeah. So two, one or two things now happens to the Death, the Dark Angel players with all these Terminators. They either 
going if they are a Dark Angel player and they have a bigger collection, they either pivot into uh, Ravenwing, as Will's saying, or the alternative is they swap to one of the other powerful armies, which now is Demons, which we don't like playing against. Um, the or they just pretend that their uh, Deathwing Terminators are Space Wolf Terminators and just play Space Wolf instead because Space Wolf's got a Space Wolf dodged, dodged it big time. Space Wolf, were... I don't know how they didn't get touched. Um, no. But yeah, so our Iron Hands, they can also go to Iron Hands, um, which again, haven't been, they got a bit of a nerf, but no way near as much as they needed, I think. Um, so that's, um, obviously we don't like Iron Hands matchup. Or they go to Guard, and that's definitely not a matchup we like. Well, Guard, Guard got some nerfs, didn't they? Because obviously, before we see, so what was the Iron Hands nerf thing? Because it was, was it Codex Warfare? That, yeah, that, that so got? Space Marines in general got nerfed. Codex Warfare is now capped that you can only earn five points in every Doctrine, which to be honest, I thought was going to be the nerf. Um, and I'm happy. I think it's the best nerf that they could have done to it. It's it's more like how the secondary should play. Um, thematically, it's a nice buff to stuff like Blood Angels and stuff that wants to rotate for it. And it punishes people that just sit in it. Because I don't think... I mean, sitting in Devastated Doctrine is an abomination and shouldn't be allowed anyway. But, you know, um, well, it just stops the facts. Because, yeah. I mean, if you play Iron Hands, you take all heavy weapons. You sit in Devastated Doctrine, you've got 315. Whereas now, at least, yeah. you don't get the 315. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't think Iron Hands need that to win. I think they can just swap it out for something else. But Well, Iron Hands uh, can just play that game. Like, two minutes played, you know, even when they're at the peak, so they don't have the best secondaries, but I'll just table you in three turns and I'll worry about outscoring you in the last two when I'm playing. Yeah, exactly. Board. Like, they've like, always got that game. You've basically just got a guaranteed 15 and took it off them and they'll just replace it with something like, you know, easy 12, easy like 11, somewhat. They're not gonna, They're still not going to be struggling. The actual power and the output of the army has not changed at all, just the scoring on it. So I still think Iron Hands are going to be a big, big nightmare, big bully as well. Um, the Guard got Kazakin Bomb fixed. I'm not going to say nerf, I'm going to say fixed because it's how it should have always been. Yeah. Um, did Kazakin, the Banner also get a, a nerf? Yes, the Banner did get a nerf. We'll go that a sec. But the Kazakin, I still. You're still going to need to take them. They're still really good. They're still up trade like mad. Um, so I don't think like this is it now. Kazakin are dead. They're still going to see Kazakin. But at least they won't be picking up four of your units in one turn with a 100 point unit. Yeah. So, but they're still lethal. Like they're still really good. Like Oh, they're horrible. I mean, that GT I played at the weekend, I didn't I didn't see it doesn't really matter. But the balance state state came out too close to it. So this, it was still all Kazakin rules and... Uh, you know, and I mean, there's a custodes change we'll come to as well. That that wasn't in effect, but we're sticking with sticking with guard though. Um, to, if, so, what 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 were the changes? So I didn't mean to interrupt there. It's okay. So obviously we had the Kazakin now capped at six mortal wounds, which is good. Um, the relic banner now no longer ignores like all weapon skill, ballistic skill modifiers, etc. Like that. It now just ignores damage caps and damage reduction. Um, so it's gone from being like the like basically the bane of every Eldar player everywhere because you could just maul every toughness free model to death because they just couldn't exist because you were like okay so technically I should be minus three to hit because you've got like lightning fast reactions amount of line of sight and it's dense in the way but this guy's waving this flag here so I get to ignore all of that and hit you on freeze <laughs> well they get with now a disgusting and resilient as well don't they I mean even if even if they'd have given us a token disgusting and resilient can never be avoided it's always minus one on death guard units even if been a token it's effectively nothing because there's only like the Reaper Obliterax and a couple of other things that it would, you know, the band that would affect. But, you know, at the same time, didn't get anything, did we? So, you know, I'm still no. talking about this. So, so like, that's good for Eldar players. So, yay! Yay, Eldar players! <laughs> um, but, yeah, that doesn't really help us. Like, again, not being, like, not losing five different units to a single Kazakin unit is nice for us, but it still doesn't really help out that much. Kazakin is still going to uptrade massively. The Plasma Execution of Lehman Rosses are still somehow untouched. Like, they're nuts. Like, they're so stupidly efficient. Um, they're fine. Um, and basically, there's so much good stuff in the Dark. And, and sorry, the Dark Angels, like Imperial Guard Codex, Astro Militar, I'm sorry. They'll just pivot to something else. Like, Sentinels are still grossly cheap for what they do. Um, Rough Riders yeah. are so dumb for a melee unit for a guard, but but yeah. you know, so like they they aren't going anywhere. They're still going to be on your top tables. You're just going to see maybe one unit of Kazakin rather than three, maybe two, but definitely not three. But they're just they the problem is you've gave them the points back because obviously they're not going to take three units now. But there's still so much other good stuff that you're just going to see more of the other good stuff. So it's still not a good matchup for us. So I don't think and they got a secondary change which actually made it easier for them to score, which made me laugh. Um, no, I, I missed that. 
Yeah, so basically they couldn't use reserves at all because boots on the ground said that every unit in your army had to be in range of an office, officer. Uh, mm. Now, I do think this is more of a fix than wasn't intended, so I'm not going to be annoyed about oh, it as much. Oh, right, so, okay. Because obviously if you weren't on the battlefield, you weren't within the range of an officer, whereas now it's changed to every unit that's on the battlefield. So it's more of a fix, in my opinion. It's still a stupidly overpowered secondary that's basically 315. Yeah, um, it's, it's, a, it's a right fix, that, though. I, I, I was yeah. aware of that, actually. I, I, like yourself, I thought it was just a sort of an FAQ fix. I hadn't even registered. Like, I would have played it that way anyway. Like, if someone yeah, exactly. Yeah, same. To... I wouldn't do that because, like I said, it's a fix to me. That's not a. It's not a nerf. That's that's just hey, that should have worked that way or a buff or whatever. Um, so yeah, guard kind of just dodged the bullet. Um, part of the Kazakin really. Uh, the yeah. banner as well, but again, we didn't. As Death Guard, that banner didn't matter too much. It was more abused by the mortars into stuff like Eldar and Carl Quinns, etc. Well, the, the, banner um, only matter, the banner only matters in it when they're shooting damage to it or something we can't get discussing the resilient. Yeah, not there's not much core units they're taking out taking like plasma guns, etc. So the what else do we have? We had um buffs to Death Watch. I'm not gonna lie, no one gives a shit. <laughs> the big the, it's not a big one. Uh it was it was a big one for me at the weekend. Uh but <laughs> you know, just just making all about me. Uh but the custodes one, so custodes yes. can't stack. I don't know the names of them, but I'll tell you what they do. It's, it's genetic alchemy and Emperor's Auspice. Which yes. is four up uh basically transhuman. Uh so you can't win them on anything more than the four and shut off all rerolls. So the obviously it stops from stacking them, so you only wound on the fourth and you can't re-roll. So you can't use both strats on the same unit in the same phase, can you? No, so yeah, so they've they basically said like if you use one of those strats on a unit, you can't then stack it with the other strat. So you basically pick do you want transhuman or turn off rerolls because when both of them were stacked on a big unit like Wardens, it, it was just not nice. It's not nice to deal with. That's um, FAQ they should have gone with from the start, to be honest. You know, when they took, took it, yeah. they just took them away. That's that, that should have just been the FAQ from the start, uh, instead yeah. of making them once per game. And then when they brought them back to combo, obviously they remembered why they took them away. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, we know, should probably get rid of that again. Yeah, third time lucky. Because um, it's still strong, don't get me wrong. I mean, both yeah. of us, especially when you put them on two different units. I know sometimes there's no rerolls going into stuff, but then Transhuman's always good. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's GW's fix that they're sort of... You know, I don't know why they didn't get there a bit sooner. Yeah, um, and it is, it is a good it is good for us in that matchup because the worst thing to do against Death Guard is combine them two because now Arch Contaminate is not working and our toughness reduction means nothing. Yeah. Um, so like it's beneficial so like they get to pick the poison now so they're either gonna have you know they're either gonna ignore basically our toughness reducing effects and transhuman or they're gonna turn off our rerolls. I think if they're smart they're probably actually gonna turn off rerolls. Yeah, I yeah, think. Depends on the situation, doesn't it, and what you sh- what you're shooting in them with? Because obviously, say it's an entropy cannon where it's just a reroll one to wound. You know, yeah. Fancy Human's got a lot more value in in that particular instance. Um, but yeah, you know, I, it, I think that that it's, it's been a, a subtle buff for us, and it it definitely hasn't you know ruined custodes. Um, you no. know, I, I don't know. Don't it know just means you, you can't like it is. It's there is but there are builds out there that require. Less thinking power than others, and the double ten warden break. I'm no offense to anyone that's running it. It's not exactly peak, you know, thought power. You put you put them on a point, and then you stack your two strats and go. You can't kill me. Same the as the Deathwing Terminator as well. About those banners, man. It's yeah. Hit and the uh, basically armor of content, the cover version in it. Um, yeah. So I don't feel too bad when it's like it's nerfed, because <laughs> um, it's just it's just not it's not fun in there. It's not interactive um, to have like just basically be told no. This thing you will not die. Um, yeah, so that happened. Um, was there any? Was there any other buffs? Any other changes? So we know Death Watch got a slight change to doctrines, now, but no one really cares. I will be honest with you. There's um, one buff that really fucks me off. We try not to swear on this podcast, but it does. You know, that'll be my one of this episode, unless the one I've missed. Why? So Tau are not struggling. Vaccine. Oh God! Yeah. So Tau, I, I know the buff is it's it's negligible. I know it's not a big deal. I spoke to mm. a couple of Tau players a week, and they were like, "I'm still not taking that unit." But like, they're a middling faction. They get, uh, at worst, they're the upper half of mid tier. They're not bottom tier. So why the a Tau getting buffs when there's like bottom tier armies getting nothing? Like why? Just it, why? Tau are yeah. fine. Ignore them. Everything that's there. Don't touch it like they didn't touch anyone else because it's fine. So we have Thousand Sons on like a 40% win rate who got the most like minute thing. Like, so anyone doesn't know, Abhor the Witch is no longer a Warpcraft secondary. 
it gets now shared with like assassinate and stuff the idea being like you can't take assassinate and uphold the witch but like it is such a it's such a mine. It's not. Even, it's not a buff to Fowls and Sons. It's just a slightly less easy score against them. There is an actual buff that we've that we've missed. I don't know if you're about to come to it. The core rules buff about where a ball the witch is now gone. Ball the witch has changed categories. Uh, yeah, so that's all about. Oh, is that what you meant? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. My bad. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I got to, got confused. With the witch fire. Sorry. Oh no. So yeah. So it's just the. Yeah, the the fact that it's obviously been changed to a different category, it's such a minute buff though, because it's the thing is like, okay, it was it was if you were against like a character heavy thousand sun stack in assassinate and abhor was quite nice because you want to kill them anyway, and if you kill the characters bonus. Is uh, it you know, speed to a top tier thousand suns player as well? Because I've listened to a couple of podcasts and I've spoke to a couple of guys who've, who've done well at events with them. They said. A ball the witch is a trap, and they actually quite like people taking it against some thousand suns. It's a bigger buff to grey knights because thousand suns, the only psyche is the champion. So I said sometimes what happens is they get left for the champion, and the champion just runs and hides. Um, yeah. So they're saying like, because obviously it's it's not as easy to score against thousand suns as you think. I know it's it is still a one that they give away, but they're not bleeding it like grey knights where you just just kill the squad. No, and I found that other people, other people that play thousand suns have also said like. It now sharing with assassinate is actually worse for them because assassinate sometimes was also a trap because I don't, I'm sure you've had it where people pick assassinate versus a death guard because we have a lot of characters but then when you can't get to them characters because they're stood in like the middle of like you know 20 scarab calls sometimes you end the game and you've not actually killed any characters because it was really hard to get to them but now people can't trap themselves taking assassinate so it's like again I don't think I don't know what GW in the heads were thinking, thinking it was like, oh, this this will fix Thousand Suns 40% oh, like, win rate, but um, then Tau needed something, because, like, who was sat there thinking, like, okay, maybe Tau doesn't have the most varied builds or whatever, but no one was sat there going, man, yeah, Tau are really struggling right now. If you watch the company in Metawatch video, right, we're never, we're never going to get, you know, we're never going to get sponsored by GW because of what I'm about to say now. And sorry to anyone, if, if anyone, I'm trying to think of a way I can do this without using... They're absolute morons. They're absolute clowns, the two people who sit on that microphone. It's like the two <laughs> people who fought off the wooden spoon at the end of a flipping tournament, walking up the top tables and critiquing the list. They don't know what they're talking about. Like, even on the video, it's, it's propaganda. Like, if Russia State TV wrote rules, and cooking, <laughs> that's what it would be. Like, like, at the start of the video, they talk about how the other arms are giving buff. They start talking about Blood Angels as if Blood Angels got a buff. They didn't do anything to Blood Angels. It's like they don't even. They don't even. It's like, did they write to me for Blood Angels and then forgot to put it in? I don't know, but they're just idiots. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't know. And then, I think I might have mentioned this before. I've said to enough people, so if I said it in the last episode, maybe this is a repeat, but it's like, you know, when you watch like Match of the Day and you're football fans, Gary Lineker or, you know, whatever sports pundit, whatever sport you do, he's critiquing the game that he didn't play in say like, oh said player you know he, he messed up there didn't he or such and such should have been in this position or whatever or this referee like they do it like that they wrote the flipping rules like they talk about the rules as if someone else wrote them and they're critiquing someone else's rules it's like if they're shit they're shit because you fucking wrote them you moron like <laughs> why are you talking about as if it's like oh yeah like I mean, obviously, you know, that, that unit's a little bit strong. Whoever did that, you know, they, I don't know what they were thinking that morning. It was fucking you. So what were you thinking? You <laughs> There we go. As you can see, it really, the, watching those MetaWatch videos, they are absolute clowns. And DW, if we're ever sponsoring this, I know, I know that's gone, but we, we don't, we know we're never that point. But uh, yeah, at the same time, just pay someone to write your rules. At this point, well, you've got the art of war, guys. Like, why don't you give them an NDA and get them to do it for you? Like, people actually know the game. Link it with Vanguard Tactics. You see, when Joy, Stephen Box, and all that crew, like, just have them do it for you. Because at least they've got a brain and they understand the game that you flip it. Oh, like, I all the games workshop sell models and they do a really good job of it. So, fair play to them on that side because they make mega profits. But in terms of making a balanced game, Jesus, like, they're just. <laughs> I just don't know what they're thinking, and it's, I'm not even saying from a salty death guy player. I'm saying from watching those MetaWatch videos, we actually watch them talk on the mic, and you're like, you just have no idea what you're talking about. It's just like, it's just people who, it's like, so it's like if I sat there and talked about, I don't know, netball. You know, my ex girlfriend <laughs> used to play netball. I could talk a bit about netball, but I couldn't go into the details of the game. After a while, I just come across like an idiot who didn't know what they were talking about. It's like that. It's like, but they flipping write the rules. 
I, I have never seen you so angry before and so wound oh, up. That was, that was actually quite funny. Do my head in. Like, it's just propaganda. <laughs> it's just, it's like watching massive corporations. You know, like when BT, like, you know, have an oil slick and they've killed those animals, but they play it down. It's not that bad. I mean, you know, we killed half the animals, but the half are still alive. It's like, yeah, but it's your fault though, isn't it? Well, it's not really our fault because... I mean, we didn't know the pipe was going to crack because if we knew, then we would have fixed it. But yeah, it was our pipe, but it's not our fault. It's like, come on. It's like, DW, like, just your rules, you write them, so just own them. And then you make a mistake, just own it, fix it, and move on. Don't try and, oh, yeah, it's not as bad. And like, why are they looking at all the game's data as well? Like, like, because this is Yeah, that, that, is, that is like, silly. Like, practice games and stuff like that. Like, I understand they have to get them somewhere. I understand it's tournaments aren't the only place where Warhammer is, is played. I do get that. And I do, I think, I always feel the Death Guard get hurt by that. Because there's a lot of Death Guard players. I know it's a very popular faction as it came out in the starter box and they're relatively new. But there's a lot of casual guys playing casual games on kitchen tables against unoptimised armies and probably doing quite well with Death Guard. But if you take them to flipping tournaments, like... They're not in a good position. They're not in the worst spot. I mean, as you know, as we talk, out of all, put them in D team, we've kind of proven. But at the same time, like, just. Oh, I don't. It's. I can call this for an hour. But yeah, no. I'll, I'll stop. I'll read <laughs> myself all right. in now. <laughs> no, I know what you mean. Like, it was funny. That's like, I had my salt episode last week. This is your salt episode. Don't worry. But it is interesting what you mean because it's like, you are right. Like, Death Guard on like casual tables can actually be a bit of a bully army. Um, but that doesn't mean like the army's actually a good play. Like, how many times have we heard literally everyone, Vanguard Tactics, Art of War, all these like top thing glass hammer say the same thing? Like, one small change that would massively help Death Guard would just give him like a five up against mortals. That would not break oh, yeah. the army, but it would cover like one huge glaring problem that the army has. And yeah. I guarantee you, we would still be a very like probably low tier army with that change but when everyone is literally saying you should probably give them this just maybe just try it um but to see but the, the frustrating thing is not it's not the fact like boohoo ta- death guard didn't get uh, buff it's the problem is like they talk about stats and then they bring out the meta watch articles which have the you know the numbers on it the win percentage and then we have armies like thousand suns that are like literally like near the dead bottom and they were like, we we're going to directly address them in the next thingy. And then they basically ignore them and then give Tau, which was sat in the middle of buff. Yeah. Like, and okay, maybe the buff isn't going to get used. Maybe broadsides aren't actually that good or anything. Oh, but it just, it's just such a feel bad. It's like, why? Why? Who was sat there going, you know what, Tau need a buff? Like, it's just odd. It's odd behavior. Uh, it's really apparent watching the videos, listen to them talk, that they don't actually follow the game, that to them it's just a job. And when they're, they're outside of that, they don't, they don't listen to any any content outside of what's said to them in like office meetings or you know in the office or elsewhere in their Games Workshop HQ. Really apparent that they're not looking for outside data. Like you know, it would it wouldn't hurt them if like one of the staff members who writes the rules maybe just watches like an Art of War video like once a fortnight or once a week or even if they just watch the like the tier list videos that they do on Art of War Down Under with Pete the Falcon, which are you know, honestly, good so they can at least get like some outside perspective from people who are actually doing it with proper stats and actual like you know people who win games and are coming from a, a valid opinion. Like it's just it's really blatant. Like I say, I'm self-employed. I won't, I won't talk about that. But like when you know about business and you can know like how people follow and how it's important to track things and notice trends and you know don't just look in your own lane. Look left and right. What are other people doing? You know how are you doing compared to them? You know, like try and get outside information. You know, this is my opinion. Try and bounce off someone. Is it reflected, or am I wrong in thinking? It's clearly none of that's happening. It's just some guy just doesn't know what he's talking about. Just, just in a room on his own, just making guesses and plucking things out the air and looking at some some information. It gives a tiny snapshot of a much broader picture. Like it's just, it's just. I feel like the only things that get addressed are like the. The glare. Is, the only things that get addressed are when they're glaring. Again, this is where the broadside thing is so weird, though, because it's like, it's like the address, the, the the you know the big echo chamber stuff. Like, oh, everyone hates Deathwing, or Dark Angels need a nerf, or can you nerf this? Like, you know the things that get repeated every day by everyone. Like the really obvious stuff. But I always feel like the way they're always better at the nerfing than they are at the buffing as well. Like I always find that like they're very bad at buffing armies. 
but they've, they've I mean I think they're actually too heavy handed with nerfs sometimes like and they, they've they been before where they've not been first with the nurse don't they when there's a big problem they give it a, a love tap that does relatively nothing and then they sort of slowly ramp it up until they're nearly there one more little love tap is what it needs and then that's when they just smash the baseball bat and just smash to pieces and it's like, like you were like, pretty much they, there guys and then you they just... did it to CSM didn't they they were like okay okay what we'll do is we'll give him some points hike he's like oh yeah but Jim we're already taking armor contempt off him it's fine we'll just double nerf it it'll be fine and then that codex yeah. is like also like near dead I mean, yeah, but, this is the thing. I was having this discussion today with um, with my flatmate. You know, is, is Death Guard worse than CSM? And I was arguing that Death Guard were worse just because, you know, <laughs> that's what you've got to do as a Death Guard player. We're always going to say that you're worse than, than everyone else. <laughs> that way it makes you feel better. But the reality is, I think we're probably we're probably on an even par. I, th- like, I think, I think, I do think CSM are above us, but I think it's only because CSM ha- do have stuff in their codex that will reward a better player like the death guard book just has no tricks like even like trying to be the best death guard player i can be and others want to be and stuff like there is just points and you look at a game and you go there is nothing in my book that can reward yeah, anything our terminator brick should be like their terminator brick yeah, their terminator like, brick is almost like the archetype of what our should have been yeah so when i play against ben he has his he plays black legion he has that strat where once per game he can give anything any legion trait and he often uses it for advance and charge but the fact he only gets it once per game it's on him to make the call when to use that correctly and if he does it right it rewards him whereas there's nothing like that in our book it's just kind of hope you make your saves and you get there yeah it's just an old book and i mean like i was saying yeah. it's one of the reasons why i think the flesh more stands out because it gives you that speed it gives you you know it's hard hitting it is durable it kind of feels like every unit should sort of be an equivalent of that <laughs> But, can we I have mean, 12 flesh mowers please yeah just run armies of all flesh yeah. mowers make, make them obsessed give them core there you go that's what <laughs> easy start, start the petition <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but yeah back, back to the states like, I think that's pretty much everything that happened um, I don't think there's anything else um, oh Dark so, Eldar got it back on the talus but again Dark Eldar did need something that I don't feel like they're yeah that's fine that's fine I, but I it's to, not going to do anything yeah support to support a couple of players who play Dark Eldar and they said it's again it's negative but it doesn't mean anything at this point yeah so um, has the overall meta changed? No, not really. I think you no, might see less dark. Really. You'll see less Death Wing at least. But Sp- the Space Wars have gone from second, third to second. Maybe he's rivaling top with Iron Hands. I think it's. Yes, I think but... it's Dark Angel, Space Wars, and Iron Hands are probably the three top armies, and it's probably put them more on a flat line instead of having you know like one on top of the other. Yeah, join um, them with Guard and Demons. Demons, yeah, I think Demons got a. Talking about the meta, I think Demons got a buff by everything because Demons dodged it, and also World Eaters as well. They're going to buff because again, they just get to rise up a little bit. I don't think World Eaters really will rise up too much because their predators are still there. They probably just stay the same. Is is the reality? Um, but I think Demons get a little buff because Demons have got quite a deep book if you're mixing gods. And I think you know other armies yeah. getting weaker. So just let them level up just a, just a little bit more. Yeah, and Demon, not... Demons have been so consistent already. Like they, they honestly, they like how they've got away with less nerfs than they have um, is impressive. But I guess I guess that is a book which is like one. If you do one bad nerf, you will think I think you'll just kill that entire book. Yeah, do you know what I mean? mean? If you do Tyranids like one too far, but buff as well. I can't remember what it was. But oh yeah, yeah. Good. Tyranids, Tyranids got their, they got their synaptic imperatives fully unnerfed, and they can also choose to change their adaptation at the start of the game. Which, by the way, that should never have gone away because that's such a cool, unique Tyranid ability to like ch- to change your passive to like a different one, depending. Like, and it was so fluffy; it made sense. So I'm glad that's back. Um, it makes sense but, at this point. When Tyranids were oppressive, it was it, it felt a bit much. But you now now Tyranids have sort of lost a lot of their now Tyranids are more I mean they're maybe I mean they're maybe a little bit weaker than they should be now. They're maybe as we said went too hard with them. But I mean the, the was it Leviathan supplement, sorry, and then Crusher Stampede. It, this edition just it just felt oppressive with Tyranids. This this feels like the addition of Tyranids just wrecking face for way too long Tyranids and Dark Eldar are the two factions that, that jump out to me from ninth as just being a bit a bit oppressive for long periods of time so obviously you had the original Dark Eldar then Meat Mountain yeah. with the three Talos and that was I felt like it went on forever as well um, but to me that probably leads quite nicely to you know to us wrapping up and having a quick sort of just just a quick sort of touch on 10th edition you know some of the stuff we'd see I mean you know we, we mentioned at the start you know the psychic phase is, well, it's changed or it's gone, hasn't it, really? Um, 
So yes. So do you want me to go into it? Yeah, yeah go on. If, if, if you, if you, I feel yeah, like you, so, might, you might have a bit more more, more knowledge on this, on this than me. Well, obviously, we don't want to talk about it too much because obviously we don't know we don't know everything and we don't want to like start making guesses. But from what we've seen today, uh, which is the psychic article. We had already mentioned that the psychic phase is gone, so we already knew that was coming. That's fine. But the thing that was most interesting today for me personally was, like, when we looked at the librarian data sheet, we saw Smite. Now, any Def Cap player knows one of our most hated things this edition was being smited. Um, anyone that's played against Thousands on Screen Nights or anything that can smite a lot, um, we don't like mortal wounds. We never have. We never will. So when the data sheet came out for the Terminator today, and I saw Smite was actually a... a a ranged attack that you can do I was very interested because that ranged attack had a shot amount a strength an AP and a damage which means like smite is no longer just take d3 mortal wounds you actually get to save which is really nice um, now don't get me wrong it has the ability that the he gets a 6-2 wound it will deal mortals instead but it's d6 shots he has to hit he shits on a 3 so let's even suggest that he gets max shots which on average he won't so let's say he gets six shots hits on three so that's four hits and he's got a wound you the odds say you shouldn't get six because yeah, you need yeah. to have six dice on average to get six so the odds are you're not actually gonna get mauled which is a lot better than currently where the odds are you will eat d3 mauls every time yeah now don't get me wrong there's a chance you can spike but I don't mind stuff when it spikes and does a lot of damage because it's it's the it's like the exception not the rule do you know what I mean yeah. Like, like good dice rolls happen. We have to accept that, you know. Um, but that change alone makes me like hopeful for Death Guard not just getting mortal off the table, which is really cool. The other thing is the librarian's abilities in a squad give his squad a four up feel no pain versus anything that's psychic based, and he also gives them sixes to hit, cause an additional hit. So I'm starting to sit here like, oh god, what's because I mean that. The ability for six to hit cause she'll hit was actually a spell previously, but now it's not, and now it's just like a passive. So I'm wondering if, like, maybe our play castle is going to get Miasma of Pestilence as a passive, so whatever squad they're in is permanently minus one to be hit. Because, like, the flies are flying all around him and stuff. Like, that's that's cool, but we don't have to. Because, I mean, how many games have you had it, Will, where you've brought a play caster, and then for some reason that game, your dice rolls on any cast just fail all the time? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is good, isn't it? You know, it makes it. I know it's not a command phase ability because obviously the command phase are could be gone and you can do things the psychic spells happen in different phases so yes. if it's a you know a damage spell it'll be done in the shooting phase if it's like a witch fire or if it's a combat so there'll be some combat spells in the combat you know sort of warp, warp time uh, will be done like the movement phase so I think that adds a lot of, a lot of flavour to it and like you say the fact that it just you know flick a switch kind of thing and it happens you know, which is you know it, it adds a lot to that but the th one of the things I want to sort of caveat about 10th and some of the things I've, I've seen a lot of people say and conversations obviously you know you made the good example there at the moment Death Guard I'm against Mortal Wounds but it's such a new addition because one of the things that I keep seeing people get hi hi hyped up about I suppose is, is the way to put it is oh this is tough than the 6 now this is going to be mace it's going to be so much harder to kill ignore people talk about toughness and strength at the moment because we don't know how it's going to change because we know there's strength 14 weapons in the game yeah it's strength 20 <laughs> we know it's a strength 20 weapon okay, so this is what I mean so people say oh Terminators and our toughness 6 that might be worse if there's strength 20 weapons we don't know what the what the new ratio is what the sort of you know the formula is for you know toughness versus strength blah 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 if that even exists because obviously it was at one point there was you know rumours of being like Ida Sigma you just roll a dice and so I think when people are getting really excited about toughness and we need to see more of the rules before that happens so for example if plague means come out on the toughness seven like, oh my god toughness seven if there's strength 20 weapons in the game that might not mean what we think it means right now i think that's something that, that that's important to remember because like i said we are getting snapshots of the rules but i remember this at the start of ninth and some things looked amazing some things looked terrible but it was only when you saw the wider picture that things made a bit more sense um, yeah, and then suddenly the terrible things are amazing, the amazing things are terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. But I mean, on a whole, I, I think it looks it looks like a very different game. I mean, I've seen some stuff. The reaction stuff looks quite interesting. Every unit gets uh, like a reaction sort of on its date sheet, doesn't they? Like I saw the Termagants one where they get to is it move back or something. If it's yeah, ours, so or... look, it looks like a lot of our strats are going onto the actual date sheets themselves. So we'll have like a lot of 
abilities hopefully it looks like they're, they're emphasizing doing a lot more in your opponent's turn so rather than having like 40 minutes to sat there waiting for your opponent you get to like you said the turn events can react to movement and stuff like that so i think that's gonna be really good and my hope is those abilities are what's gonna now allow death guard to actually express being a good player yeah. um like we know about the deep strike in the opponent's turn that's gonna be allowed you know you can make a big difference by using that correctly and I'm hoping we're going to get abilities like that, which will allow you to show off your generalmanship and, you know, how how you can, like, you, you foresee this would be good, like, a turn later. So we'll move here with this reaction sort of thing, you do this. Um, that's my hope, because at the moment, Death Guard is a very, it is a stale army. Like, it, it, you know, you walk up the board, you hide it's behind an L. Isn't it? It's, it's, it's very it's, predictable. It's a sad reality. But, right at the same time, you know, it's, it's you know, we all love Death Guard not oh, too, yeah. I, I Still do love feel it. like 10th the levelling of the playing field you know we don't know what Death Guard are going to get I mean obviously we've saw is it Oath of Moment is that what it's called the, the space mean what it, it's yeah where obviously that ability I mean it looks it looks busted it looks bonkers good yeah in, in, the, in the context of 9th edition but we don't know you know is there going to be something that is Age of Sigma for example which it looks a lot like to me as I say I've only played a bit of Age of Sigma Age of Sigma is a weird game where they give you this broken OP rule and the same rules that they give you the exact hard counter to the same broken OP rule. So it's like, all oh, right, so this is busted, but then this other rule just completely counteracts it. So if everyone's taken that, then you just know that you also need to take that in the same army and then neither of it does anything. So I don't know if that's going to be like, you know, there's going to be some kind of, you know, stratagem where you can pick, you can play this on this model, and it can never be the target of Oath of Moment kind of strat or picking a yeah, no rerolls or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be like, well, you know, because obviously, see, you take more Tyrion. Obviously, more Tyrion is going to get Oath of Moment. I, I, I think that would be with the obvious thing. But there's then like a sort of a, a strat where this unit cannot be the like you said, the target of rerolls. So more Tyrion can't be that target. You know, is it is it going to be some kind of weird hard counter mechanic like that? So yeah, there's, there's... I think another thing people are getting again a bit they they are a lot of people are looking at these previews and doing the crime, which is they're putting the nine for dead context on these rules. So like I yeah. saw people doing maths before, like oh, so these terminators are going to teleport in and then shoot you with like you know like friggin' 30 like you know ra- sorry 10 rapid fire bolters from like 24 inches. I'm like, well, no, because you can't do that anymore like we don't the bolter discipline is gone, is gone. It, yeah. yeah rapid fire is there but bolter discipline is gone so they have to be within 12 now again um twin linked people are like oh but i saw it's gonna reroll i've got my reaper gladiator reaper now it's gonna do 24 shots now it gets to reroll all the wounds and i'm like well no because if you read the article they said it no longer doubles the shots so it's actually 12 shots so rerolling the wounds so they've got they've took the ceiling of the damage down because like max can kill is now 12 bottles instead of 24 but the consistency is higher and i think i'd rather have that like than so much just picking up 24 models because <laughs> yeah and the the one thing that looks like they're doing is they want to put a big difference between like tank weaponry and infantry weaponry because we saw like rhinos t9 and we saw that the melter rifle for eradicators is still strength nine so even anti-tank i think infantry anti-tank is going to be able to hurt vehicles but it's still going to do it inefficiently compared to like a big you know anti-tank weapon on a tank yeah um, like entropy cannon i think entropy cannon will be where you'll start looking at you know the high strength like big damage for putting holes in tanks and the melter guns you have in your infantry are more like this is a portable anti-tank weapon it's still not very good at it but if it does connect it does go through it can take a chunk out of it which is yeah. nice because at the moment we're playing a game where you know your people can just like plink your tanks to death with tiny little wounds and it's very irritatingly <laughs> so like I, I, I am I am very excited Let's change the site morale we saw morale as well today morale is Ooh, no longer well, models just actually. fleeing yeah so it's you no longer take morale um, for just taking a loss or losing guys so at the start of your turn in your command phase you roll you do a, a morale check for every unit that is under half strength or if it's a single entity is under half wounds so vehicles oh. have to do it now and characters and if you fail the check for the rest of that turn their objective control score goes to zero so they're shit for holding objectives oh. they can't use strats on them which is nice. interesting okay. and if you want to fall back from combat you have to do it as if it's like you know like a desperate breakout where you have to roll a dice and if you roll one a guy dies ah 
Oh, nice. Okay, so, so that's quite a nice little change. I'd, I'd missed that. I'd, yeah, I'd, so, uh, so no more rolling seven fucking ones and losing seven Plague Marines for no goddamn reason. Um, instead, they'll just be broken for the turn. Can't be used strats on. Can't. Um, I won't I want to even take a test on seven Plague Marines because they're not under half strength. Nice. So, I mean, yeah. This is... I mean, this is all, you know, context, and then obviously, you know, the first thing I was going to say was then, well, what about Poxwalkers? They're fearless. What do they get? Because half that stuff they couldn't do anyway, unless, you know, it means their objective control they always keep. But like I say, we, we, don't, Maybe, know, yeah. we, we don't know the context of, of how those rules are going to sort of fall and, and impact individual armies, and, and obviously, you know, the other rules that probably impact that as well. Yeah, but I, I think, think the way I'm looking at it is, like, Death Guard is already in kind of a... It's in a, it's in a dry spot. It's a very... Like I said, it's predictable. It's bland at this point. I don't think it's bland. It's, it's quite flavorful. Like the rules, like contagion auras and stuff are like. But like playstyle wise, it is. It does the thing. It walks forward. It tries not to die. When it's you very write predictable. Lists, you often find that it's you not much, come back yeah. to the same list, don't you? Because we've played it for three years, and it's sort of like the meta. The meta, you know, it doesn't change on, on as regularly now. There's not new codexes coming to so you. Generally, just find well, you know, it's the same core units with one small change here and there unless you want to completely try and write something a bit a bit different a bit wacky or you know try and sort of take a skew or something that you know yeah. is like that but then and like we're already at the bottom of the pile of like power levels so like any change at this point i am i am 100 percent welcome to because at least it'll be somewhat fresh like you said we've played this book now for three years i'm a bit tired of it at this point like i want yeah. to make a new list i want new abilities on my characters or what i want a reason to take the plague surgeon i want a reason to take noxious bite bring more like this is this is the chance now so i think everyone should be i know there's people out there that are like pessimistic and like well gw will just fuck over death guard again well i mean we're already <laughs> I mean, kind of fucked I'm, over i'm gw's biggest real fight as fun as yeah just come this exactly and like <laughs> but, i mean the way you're looking at it is like we're fucked anyway as it is kind of at the moment we're not in a good spot we haven't been in for ages so like at least at least if it's going to be just as bad at least it'll be fresh and just as bad but i'm hoping yeah. it will at least be pretty decent and i'm hoping it'll be fun and yeah, I, I am excited. Like I'm genuinely well, I'm, excited. I'm looking looking for that point of being at a right army list, try stuff new, and then speak to people. And you know, hey, have you thought about this army list? Have you saw that army list and bounce things around and sort of you know people like yourself, you know, reach out the wide community, the good Death Guard players that I know, and just sort of like you know have like little chats and you know sort of you know, put ideas together and you know bounce ideas off, talk about how things have gone. Because at this point, it's like you know. Yeah, we send each other a list and it's just like, oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's good. Now, have you thought about changing that melter gun for a plasma gun and that plague marine? It's like, oh, I don't know. And then you can have a a one sentence conversation about it. I don't know what I mean. It's, it's got that point, isn't it? I think, I think we have more conversations about bringing allied detachments than we do actually. Like, blood yeah, yeah, stuff. That's it, yeah. Is, is Mam- can you make random transfigures work? Is there any way to justify a, pla- a plague bearer squad? I think that's probably the. A war dog is better than entropy cannons. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. What, what, what favour to put on your war dogs? Because, yeah, God, we're talking more about allies. I mean, this is the thing, isn't it? I mean, I, like, like you said, I think because Death Guard. Uh, you know, we're not we're not in the best the best spot in terms of like competitive play. That you know, the fact that I, I don't want to say things couldn't get worse. Cause I, you know, going back to my uh, early thoughts, <laughs> games, they'll probably find a way. If, if you give them a chance and bear bait them, I bet they'll find a way. So God, if we do get worse, you know, maybe they listen to this podcast and maybe it's all my fault. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm really excited for it. I think Death Guard are going to be good. And I've said this to a few people too, and you know, I, I want to sort of say this here too. We don't want to be one of the first five codexes. We really don't. We want to come out in the middle because the early codexes come out the door strong and then they get the the, the, the early ones, the first ones to become obsolete. Like, it happened in 8th, it happened in ninth. You know, Necrons, look at them, they're the same. Space means it always happens to them. Space means because the poster boys get like a huge, massive buff towards the end the edition. You know, often get two codexes in addition where everyone else just gets one. But yeah, we, we don't want to be one of the first five codexes. If we do, obviously we'll, we'll, we'll take it and I'll, I'll love it and I'll get excited and I'll you know hold we'll, we'll my book. But in the in thinking long term, that we want to come out towards the end of the first third or you know in the middle, like because that's where we'll get more more from it. I would think, because you know once power creep set in and they know what's sort of they've already started writing some some stronger rules, then hopefully they'll be able to write defensive rules that sort of combat those rather than write defensive rules that are strong when there's not much power in the game but then when they start adding the power those rules quickly seem like they're a bit yeah a bit sort of yeah well i think i think i think a nice thing to wrap up on now is 
it's just to give the listeners and the viewers sort of like an idea of like what to expect from the podcast sort of like in the next couple of weeks so we've been talking we don't really we could sit here and we could make videos and like you know podcast episodes about how to beat x army or like how to improve your odds versus guard but given the context of like potentially like ninth sorry 10th releasing like two months almost we kind of it's hard to motivate ourselves to do it plus like it's just going to be irrelevant information for you yeah. soon um what we want to do is we sort of want to relaunch the podcast but not we're not going to relaunch we're still with the same name it's still nothing's going to change yeah. but we're going to obviously when the new edition comes out we're going to try and like jump it's straight on it we're going to you know basically so we're still going yeah, to yeah we're going to have a lot episodes. more structure yeah we still want to do some episodes between now and 10th this isn't like a sort of signing off and speech in a few months guys it we're still trying to do in every couple of weeks but we want to the episodes will be more kind of just general sort of talk and talk about our games talk about you know things we see with someone does well at a tournament t- talking about that you know kind of maybe it's more community based stuff rather than sort of going deep diving rules as Aiden says but once 10 comes we're going to start doing some sort of like some deep dives on units you know list archetypes and you know and start to talk about the basic rules of the game as well and how Death Guards slip into that yeah you might even get treated to maybe a bit more frequent episodes at the start because obviously we'll, we'll have maybe like an episode dedicated like entirely to like HQs or something like because there's going to be so much to talk about and obviously we want to talk about our games because I'm going to be I know I'm going to be playing straight away like I'm going to be jumping on that and the list ideas we're going to come up with there's going to be so much but we want to we want to have a structured sort of like okay today's episode of Death Guard we're going to go for all the troops choice we're going to talk about them, what we like what we don't like etc and then we can start talking about you know tactics the general play style of stuff detachment abilities and um, all sorts of stuff that basically we wanted to talk about like that like in the current edition right now but it's so just it's just pointless like I mean, it might, yeah. it's not technically pointless because some people out there will listen to it and probably will like go to an event in like two weeks or something. But if you if you were doing that and you want like feedback or help, message like me directly. Like I'm on Facebook, I'm on Discord group for the Nurgle one, Nurgle's Mansion, I think it's called. Um, I'm happy to help you that way. But we just don't want to dedicate like you know two hours of an evening, like obviously planning the podcast, talking about stuff for information that you know we don't want someone in. A month, like two months time loading up an episode to say oh well, look it's death card tactic v- video over here i've just found and then listen to it and they realize it's completely outdated because then you know it, it, it's just dead at that point it's dead days yeah. dead information so what we talk about doing is maybe updating there because obviously the image is quite stale as it is the black and white one i was sent away and i, I want to sort of start putting some some color tint in it or something so there's like a visual one so you can see the newer ones compared to the old ones that haven't to sort of read the text but we might well might we are going to change the image uh, once 10th edition comes so all the 10th edition sort of content will have a different visual to it so you know without sort of having to read yeah we're, get, we're getting some thumbnails made for us so people can easily identify the episode the episodes will have like actual like name structure so like you know episode episode the troops choices or you know just something to help you just navigate a bit more um, obviously it's a bit ad hoc at the moment because we've just started and neither of us have done podcasts before so we're hoping to get a bit more professional we even talked about maybe putting face cams on so people who watch the YouTube videos can see us and interact. It's just a bit more interactive for people to watch. Um, you can see me pissing myself, laughing at Will's raging off about James Workshop. <laughs> um, I see, yeah, James um, Workshop. If you are listening, just outsource, outsource it. I just don't understand why they don't outsource it. Yeah, Tell someone write the core rules and then write outsource your tweaks to get Vanguard tactics under an NDA. And like, I hear rumours about Games Workshop. Just pay people properly. They're just they're skin flints. That's why. That's why Codex has come out with spelling mistakes in them because they don't pay professional companies to proofread them. It's like you're one of the fastest growing companies. Like they grow at the same rate of Tesla they were at one point. Maybe it's not anymore and our lockdowns up. But like, you know, own it. Like grow up. They're like sort of like the best example. It's like they're like they're like someone who's like a toddler who's you know turned into an adult. You know, twenty years later. But they still act like a toddler. Like games with a big <laughs> company who just seem to still act like a small company. It's like outsourcing, it's like expand teams. Like, do you know what I mean? Like I just don't it just really frustrates me. Like it's one of these things that like, looking at it from someone who's a business owner and just seeing how they do it, it's just it's just at times it's amateur hour. Like, you know, like even the way they can't manage to do stock and fulfil orders, like the prime example, not to go off on a rant, is like the Arcs of Omen book. They know at this point they've got pretty much a regular fixed amount of players. The people who bought the Arcs of Omen book can't remember the same. Well, they've been the same people who bought the rule supplement. 
maybe there'll be a small fluctuation but if you know how much you saw how many units last time just get that many units done from the start because that's how many you're going to sell again how do they not know this and realize it's just like it's just basic business there's either something that i don't realize where there's like some kind of link in the chain that's a bit damaged a bit broken or something they're trying to update and that's knocking on everything else or they are just a bit incompetent like it's just like i say they're a they're a, they're a massive company with a small company's mentality like i imagine them like you go to their office and have a huge warehouse but everyone works out of one room and the rest <laughs> of it's just this empty office and it's like why have you done this so we don't know like why don't you know we just don't know we just didn't think <laughs> i just feel like that's their, their attitude <laughs> but anyway it's not to random about guys i do love them i do love death guard i do love the game plays as a kid but like just from the competitive and the rules right inside and a few of the sort of you know book bearers about the hobby it's just they could they wouldn't have to do very much to just improve it and, and that's not just to make death guard amazing it's more just just some of their content on a whole and the way they sort of like the way they put information forwards you know sometimes i'm just a bit like why i mean other times are brilliant you know the way they leak things and they've got us all on tent hooks waiting for tent you know very clever you know sort of you know get people talking but anyway this is a complete tangent and I've already had one rant about games where I won't start again and obviously I could, we, we I could leave a microphone in front of you for an hour and just let I'll you go say, yeah yeah there's a podcast end I'll just I'll just talk to myself but yeah but you know <laughs> but, but 10th is going to be an exciting time and one of the episodes you might even do we might even have some list building stuff for example me and Aiden when Death Guard are in the meta and there's more than one build we'll probably run very different things I'm I think a much more aggressive player you know I'd love to just have lists that run forward and push and you know, do well as Aiden's more sort of cautious, calculated. So maybe it's one week we'll have Aiden sort of, you know, write a list for Aiden and I'll put my thoughts and maybe he'll do one for me and then we'll play it and we'll talk about it. And then people can sort of like listen to how we've approached it, you know, maybe they can sort of take something from that. Maybe to just take from that and it's uh, from mine, it's just, wow, that's mental. I'm never going to do any of those things. But, uh, you know, <laughs> it's one of these things where we can sort of go into this because obviously it's a clean slate and we want to sort of like, really ramp up that content and get people you know sort of like in with us and we might even start a, like a discord at that point or something like that or you know try and start something where people can sort of like have a community built around the podcast and if you really you know, look we might even do a battle report on youtube there you go yeah i was i was talking i've got some uh some some, some posh to be and the stuff we could do that with uh or maybe we would even link up with some of the content uh, content creators and and do that, but anyway, so you know, yeah. But although, uh, spoiler alert, if we do do that, it will not be a Death Guard mirror match. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's me versus Aiden, <laughs> week in, week out, me versus Aiden, Death Guard versus Death, Death Guard. Death Guard. Guard. <laughs> Literally, nothing but, but yeah, That's man, it. I think this is a good place to call it I for think today, it is, yeah. So, yeah, but, uh, so we'll we'll try to get another episode up at some point. It might not be like as strict as the two week schedule, sort of have been because again, it's it, unless something like changes or something exciting happens for us there's not too much particularly for us to go into at this point but we will try we'll try our best for you and um obviously i'm on facebook people message me and talk to me all the time on discord and whatnot so feel free to like if you want opinions on lists or anything like that feel free to send them my way but we will we will see you again soon do not worry it's not a sign off it's not a thing or anything like that oh but, yeah, yeah no, I mean, um, I- it's going to be three months, I think, before the next edition. So I yeah, think we exactly. should still, still do two episodes, even if it's once every three, once every four weeks. What we'll try and do is because the reality is, if there's nothing much happening, it might not be there's very much to talk about. So we're just trying to sort of think. I mean, we always say start if they've managed to sort of do it way longer than we expected. So maybe we could, maybe we could do it. Maybe we'll stay regular. But I think the thing that to be good to shout out to the community, though, people listening. If anyone comes across anyone who does well with the list, uh, and, you know, for one uh, an event, you know, that maybe is a major with, with at least 100 people or a 5 or, you know, anything with 30 people plus, reach out to us because we still want to speak to good players, you know, maybe to do and, you know, get their opinions and I know other people do. So that might be more the kind of content that we look for to bridge the gap and bring in other people to sort of like get outside perspectives just to sort of tie us over till 10th. And then obviously we'll probably come back in a month or so recap on the stuff we've seen for 10th because as we know we know the box set is being released um or being previewed in two weeks on the 29th um so it could be that when that comes out they actually announce a 10th date um my my i feel that if they're putting that out in two weeks maybe the pre-order is going to come two weeks after and it's maybe going to be mid-may which means that Ooh. everything we've said you know 
you'll hear from us much very soon. Yeah, much could, sooner. We'll ramp up, ramp up rather than slow down. But um, but yeah. So but if you yeah. want an episode, go win an event. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Yeah, you know, that's it. Pro- pro- prove to us that you uh, that you really love the Death Guard and uh, you can take them all the way. Uh, but no, uh, you know, like I say, it, and, and anything anyone's got, anyone, even if anyone, you know, anyone's like a, a really good hobby death hobbyist with Death Guard. If someone, you know, paints an amazing more time to win a Golden Demon with, you know. That could be a good episode. We could talk about, you know, some interesting paint schemes because Aiden's a much better painter than I am, and maybe we could do a hobby episode or something like that. Um, but these are all things that we can talk about, and obviously, you know, Aiden's uh, very active on social media. When episodes do pop up, you know, like, subscribe, um, and make sure you don't miss them. Basically, yeah. If you are a if you are a podcast listener um, and you do have a YouTube account, um, it does massively help us if you could just. You don't have to listen on YouTube, but if you could just nip on to our channel and maybe drop a nice little nice little thumbs up and a nice little subscribe. It just it does help the algorithm and help, helps us to reach out more because when, when you type in Death Guard um, podcast at the top, I don't... Well, how are we doing? Let's have a look. Do we, do we pop up? Do, 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 do. Let's have a look. Death Guard podcast, do we? Oh, yeah, look at that. Number one, baby. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's but it, yeah, guys. it, does, it does help us to reach new players and whatnot. Yeah, but well, that, that's because of the guys listening, and, and we really appreciate. It. We know there's other Death Guard uh, content creators out there. Yeah, we know it's obviously not the best content at the moment, with like, like I said, with the edition ending and stuff like that. But um, there's, you know, it's a bit of a weird spot for us. But we do appreciate the downloads. We appreciate the listens. We appreciate all the love and support. Yeah, but again, also, you know, we will sign off because I know we've been dead. But if someone has a, a, a list idea that thinks really interesting, again. Reach out to reach out to us as well. You know, I, I, I keep hearing people talk about these 60, 60 plague me lists. My first response is, what secondaries does it play? Uh, I know it's like some primary, but yaki yaki yaki. If someone's you know made that work or is testing it and has some some thoughts and opinions they want to share with the world, and this is the kind of content we're looking for. Um, but I'll I'll sign off for me. I'll let Aiden have his have his goodbyes. And, and again, thanks for listening, guys. And uh, we look forward to catching the next one. Yeah, so as so Will said, we'll look forward to the next episode. We'll still, we will hear back from us again soon. Um, and um, if you want some insider information, that is totally legitimate. And I have seen, I've seen the tenth Death Guard Codex. I know it all. I know exactly what's coming. But by a noxious Blightbringer. <laughs> I thought you'd been safe today. I thought you'd been holding all the information. So it's all Noxious Blightbingers and all Plague Surgeons. You don't need anything else. Sell yeah, the rest of your nev- models. Never a Plague Surgeon. Never a Plague Surgeon. Oh, is that what it is? Just Noxious Blightbingers? <laughs> yeah. In, in the new rules, the Plague Surgeon actually just kills your own models. It's pretty shit. <laughs> <laughs> I can't betray it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, everyone. Right. We'll catch you later, everyone. See you soon. Bye. Yes. Bye.